Hey, hello everybody. This is Santa Jerry from Santa's Switch Adapter Toys Workshop. And today we're going to show you how to do a Fisher Price Panda. Modify and adapt it over for a Switch Adapter toy. So I've got everything kind of set up here now. If you're interested in doing this, you probably have already gotten this far. Uh, we pulled the box out of the back of the control box out of the back of the panda. We've opened it up. We've taken a look at what we found. And I already know where I want my adapted cord to go through. So I've drilled a hole, pushed it through. Sometimes the speaker on these is kind of held in place by a little glue and you got to pry it out of the way. But it's, it's you know, best to do that. Uh, I have given over to tying a knot in the cord to secure it inside of the toy. This is the most sure way. We've had uh, failures with the zip ties. I know that's a common practice, but sometimes the zip ties fail, break, snap, whatever, and then the cord becomes loose and you've defeated the secure purpose of it. So the way this toy works, we'll turn it on for just a moment, power it up, is you press the belly button, which activates this big knob here, which pushes this dial here, this button in the center of the screen, center of the toy. I know that the focus may or may not be on that, but you're, you're, you're going to see this circuit mounted switch. So I'm going to turn the toy off. Actually, I turned it up. Now I turned it off. So here's the process that I use for this toy. We need to remove that and by turning it off now I can kind of play with the circuit board metal object and not have fear. We need to remove that button and it's held in by two push points. don't know if you can see that. There's you know the two little rubber or silicone points that go in and hold it in place. I'm going to set that aside. We might have to trim that in a moment here, so I'm not going to go into all the tools needed on this, but just some things to have handy, a soldering iron and all that stuff, a pair of scissors because we might trim that. So that exposes our circuit, our impregnated circuit. And a lot of people have trouble soldering on these because they are so small. So. I also have discovered that there seems to be a very thin coating on the surface of that that makes it difficult for the solder to stick. So I'm going to take my X-Acto knife, my sharp, sharpie, a sharp object here, and I'm going to scratch that up a little bit. I have already done that to this before opening up this video, but I'm carefully going to scratch onto that a little bit roughen up the surface and expose the solder. I don't want to remove the solder from the circuit board where those connections are, but I'm going to expose it a little bit and help it. And I'm only doing that, let's see, I've got different lights on here. I'm only doing that at the extreme. I'm doing it right here and I'm doing it over here because those are the two points we're going to solder to. So having done that, Let's see if my soldering iron is warmed up. We all know that wires stick better to circuit boards if they have been tinned. So we're going to warm that up a little bit. And we're going to tin in a little solder on the board. Just the smallest dot, making sure that it doesn't cross both, both of them. Bridge over the, the two connections on the board. And again, we're going to tin on the other side of that. And we're going to inspect it. Now, I don't know what we can see on the camera here. Get some light going from a couple different directions. We need to make sure that the solder we just put on did not accidentally cross short circuit the board. One way of testing that is to turn the toy on. So the toy works. We'll momentarily set that factory button in place, activate the toy, so it's still working just fine. We haven't short circuited yet. So I'm going to turn it back off while we finish this process. 
now. And I, I point out, I've already got my, I, I make these up in advance. I ring out these stereo cords so that I know which is going to make, which two have to be connected to make it a mono cord, which is required for these switch adapted toys. So that's that's been done. There's another video that I might link to in this to show you that. I'm now going to solder those two to the to that tinned area that we left, and we're just we're just very lightly putting this on here. Not very lightly. I mean, it's secure as it's going to ever get. But we're only putting it on that one side. We are not affecting that entire switch area. So once we've got that on there, it's now soldered in place. Let's see. I think you can see that we've got that on. Let's check our connection by hooking up a switch. And obviously we need to turn the power back on, don't we? We need to turn the toy on. So here we've got the toy. My switch is out of camera view, but there it is. So to verify it, Every time you punch the switch, it should reset the, the toy to do something else. So, if you can hear, I'm interrupting it every time I punch the switch. This toy is successfully adapted to be used with a switch. So, I'm going to turn it off so we can finish this up. So now I want to put this back in there. But I want to make sure that the part of that doesn't interfere with this. So this is where a pair of scissors comes in. We're going to trim not the black part in the center but off the side. We're trimmed off the side of that. Let's hold, that, let's hold it up to something. Oop, don't run right away. Hold it up to something so you can see what I've done. I've taken off part of that. That way when I put this back on, it won't interfere, or the soldering won't interfere with the functioning of the button. One of the goals that I have on all of my switch adapted toys is they will function as intended from the factory. So we need to push that back down, and those things are hard to push in on their own. I have taken a paper clip and bent it out straight away, wrapped it up in a fancy little holder here homemade holder and makes it easy to use and those buttons or those switches in the center of them have a, a hole on each side and if you use that you can push the, the, the switch back down to the circuit board that is now on there and good to go let's verify turn the power back on I didn't really need to unplug that switch but um, so, does it work factory button? Yes. Does it work with a switch? Yes. It interrupted the program. Back to the factory button. And back to the switch. Successfully adapted. All we need to do is to reassemble it. And when you reassemble it, you'll find that it's probably best to put it together this way. So you can see what's going on. Line everything up. And there it is. Obviously, you need to put the screws into it. Okay. There we go. Turn this off while I re-finish it up. So, Something else you want to keep in mind when you adapt a Panda, you're taking a hard object with the control button on it and you're putting it into a plush toy. If you don't get that lined up in there perfectly, it will not run. I have, I include instructions when I send out these toys that you need to be, you need to finesse this hard body back into it. Um, the placement of this ring inside of this belly area 
is absolutely critical and if it's because of the way this is made yeah, it's hard to see that inside of there but you'll, you'll find out when you try and put them back together the way this is made it can accidentally hold this down and if this is held down okay you, I, you can probably see here that it's held down on one side lower than the other I'm going to keep it there I'm going to turn it on the toy starts but nothing you do to this button will make that work. When you punch in your switch, nothing you do to the switch will make that work because it is held down and squished in place. And that's what can happen if it's not perfectly located inside of that body. The moment you let go of it, it's perfectly fine. So we want to be cautious on these that when you reassemble it, you take the time to make sure that it's perfectly centered in there and everything will be great all right so there's my tips on how to do the fisher Price linkables panda thank you all and have a wonderful day this is sandra from sandy switch adapted toys